Good evening, Somers. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Somers Town Board Work Session of Thursday, November 1st. And if you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would just remain standing, and I'd like to have a moment of silence for the victims of the Pittsburgh synagogue shootings. Thank you. Can you see? <coughs> I'll make a motion to open public comments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Anyone here for public comment? Yes. <laughs> there we go. I guess I knew you were here for this. Maureen, come up and join us. Here. I'm just never sure what it's about. <laughs> never sure what it is. No. Well, would you like a nice, nice story? Does she have to say Maureen Devine of it's Seven it's Susan? Is this fairy tale or uh, <laughs> true? <laughs> I had a massive branch fall, just missed the house, and one of the lighter branches fell on the wires, which twisted them, lowered them. My neighbor coming by, who knows how to do these things, was able to take that branch off the wires. Wow. Call Nysic. In two hours, they were there. Yeah. And the uh, gentleman assessed it. He said he, he untwisted what he could. And he said, we've, we've got to have a new pole new wires and all, but it's an engineering thing. I said, okay, fine. So next thing you know, um, the NYSIC's back the next day. They put in an anchor where the anchor would be and marked the pole. And the next day or so, they came and they put the anchor in and anchored this pole, which was kind of leaning a little bit. So it was fine. Meanwhile, when, when Don had called NYSIC, they asked him, uh, can you touch the wires? which I thought was, yeah. Then we were a big emergency. I said, no, so that was fine. So then I got a nice letter from NYSIC explaining that they were going to put the no pole in, new wires with a schematic. There are two of my neighbors, Anna's one, um, who are on the same junction box. So what they did is uh, they came in, put the new pole in, and uh, rewired the three houses Oh. brand new wires awesome yeah i mean it, it it just went it moved along beautifully the, the the guys were wonderful who came and worked on it and all but they uh, i told them i never had any problem with nice <laughs> <laughs> they said oh good <laughs> but of course you see what's happening now is i have joined the two pole somers group because now i have two oh, poles, now you have the two poles there. Oh, yeah. because verizon right, right. nice it can't move Right. So I have <laughs> two poles. The old nice it cut uh, right. as far as they could the top of that right. pole, I guess, to take the, the weight off it. But uh, yeah, so there it stands. And yeah, Cable uh, Vision and Verizon, and Verizon have to come and move there. Way behind yeah. moving their. I've wires. seen them more in town though lately. I have to say, I've seen Verizon around They've working on some visible. poles. Pretty so visible. I'm hoping that they're starting to get yeah, a little. But there's still no, there's the two pole. Of them. Uh, yeah, anomaly throughout the town. Yeah, or so nubs of poles actually. It, it'll be the twelfth of never. But this pole is really not dangerous. The other pole that I was so upset about on Deansbridge that had broken and was yeah. over. Yeah. But after this one, they came and changed this one's it, right? there, and uh, I have nice new wires. My two neighbors have lovely new wires. We have a lovely pole, so. Well, this board is not mm -hmm. used to hearing those type of stories. Yeah. Well, I told the guys, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going out to the town <laughs> board to tell them how great you guys are. They, are you it really? I said, yes, I am. You know, when you've got something nice to say, I say it too. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, we're hoping that, the, you know, Rick always talking to them and, and we're on the, uh, in the task force. So we meet with the nice people regularly. So hopefully when they hear Somers now, because they, they know they're going to be meeting with us every Every two months, we get together with all yeah, of the management. Yeah, they were there quite. Uh, now, did you, quite now, did you tell them you were a former ca councilwoman? No. <laughs> yeah, well, then they would have gone away. You know, they, would have <laughs> away. they wouldn't have given you any help. Yeah, you're yeah. affiliated with those guys. <laughs> yeah, but they they did the three houses, which made sense because the uh, you know, the three of us are on the same junction box. 
So it was all. Well, that's good. Okay. I'm going to take notes of the story and tell in December when they come here for that meeting. I'm going to tell them. Tell me when the meeting is. When we get enough negative, we try to. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. The first week of December, I think on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock. I'll be very happy to tell them like that. I've never heard someone describe wires as nice, though, or lovely, 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 lovely wires. How would you describe it? Those wires were originally. Yeah, I remember you. You said that a long time ago. Maureen, we'll let you know when the next meeting is. They told me. Okay, thank you. They told me that the pole. Our old pole was punky. <laughs> punky Lovely wires and punky it's poles. <laughs> okay, continuing hmm. with public comment. Is there anyone Thank else you, here for public comment? Maureen again. See, seeing and okay. hearing none, I'm going to make a motion to uh, close the public Second. comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. <coughs> okay, the next item. Um, Parks and Recreation authorizes solicitation of a request for proposals for Reese Park concession stand per memo dated October 26, 2018 from Steve Ralston. It's hard to believe that that contract is up. It really is. I remember talking to him the first time, right, Rich? So uh, we'll These are the second. Uh, these are the se yeah, this is the uh, second group operating. that's had it for a few years. Right. Um, you know, we are going to have to look at the RFP a little closer. Uh, you know we're competing with people who usually do where there's pools yeah and it's a much bigger draw and it's an all-day draw it's ours, hard ours is not as big a draw as we would have hoped it would have been when we first opened it's a great thing to have for the park and it and, it, and it's <coughs> a good purpose but it's not it doesn't have the the pull that uh, that some other places have so, we'll, so we'll be looking at it closely yeah, but the, the yeah. good part is the, the vendors have paid a fee to have the right to use the, the building there to sell their food Oh, what we've amassed over five years now, I think, enough money to pay back what originally had been taken out of the rec fund yes. to, to pay for the building. So that's been replenished in, and so that does no, no, it's you know, great. possible make a change there. But, you know, we always say to the, to the people who come there, you're there to make a profit. We really don't care. You know, the town's not running it for a profit. Uh, and we just want really good service. So the question is, what would be the charge to the people using our building? They pay electricity, they pay for their gas, et cetera, but it's our building. And what price is that where it allows them to offer an excellent product and service to the people in town? Because that's our goal, right. while allowing them, of course, to make a profit so mm -hmm. they have an incentive to, to keep it open. And that's what I guess we're going to look for. Is the exist so the existing vendor is not interested? Well, they might, might, he might, might be, be but, might be. but the contract says it has to go open now because the first, it was renewed once and now it must be reopened. Was every five years? By our agreement. Was that mean? Every five years is the... Uh, well, this, this contract, it was renewed, renewed once with them and it stipulates right. in it that it be opening it. So it can't just be open and keep renewing it. Right. Not an evergreen. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we'll move that to, to the consensus agenda. Good. All right. The next um, item on town board number one, the uh, 2017 audit. Um, we have a discussion and presentation by Jeffrey Schaefer. I just want to hear how we are. O'Connor Davies. <laughs> Step right up, Jeffrey. You say the right things, I won't even ask any questions. Give me a rating. Yeah, here. Is this your first time? Double A going to triple A. This is the first time presenting. For you, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, Thank you. For, 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 us. Hand. for us. Yeah, for us. For us. Not wherever. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, if, if it's ever, then we're an easy Just, audience. You become an accountant yesterday. Thank you. You, you Oh, I like this. You've had several um, of people from your company come. They've all been excellent. Well, thank you. As they presented, so hopefully Jeff, you'll say that. Now there's pressure. Now there's pressure on you. So Jeff, just for the uh, for record, say your state your name and title and where you're from. My name is Jeffrey Shave. I'm a partner with PKF O'Connor Davies, who is our town auditor. So the the PowerPoint is just a brief synopsis of the audit, and it goes through some of the key line items um, that are in the actual financial statements. I find it easier just to go through this handout rather than okay. flip through a uh, close to a 100-page book. It's just a little easier to look at. We like you already. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, uh, I have the book here, um, and I'll answer any specific questions you might have. So on, do we. Yes. Yep, we anything you might have on the book, um, you know, I'll be here to, to discuss that as well. 
Um, the agenda is just we're going to focus mostly on the general fund, uh, financial results for the year, uh, give you fund balance, uh, five-year history I have for you, and some fund balance um, of your other governmental funds. Just an overview, um, I'm on page three, uh, overview of the re uh, required communications related to the audit. Uh, management's responsible for selecting and implementing appropriate accounting policies, uh, fairly presenting the statements in accordance with GAAP, establish, establishing and maintaining effective internal controls and compliance with laws, regulations, and provisions of contracts and grant agreements, and providing all records to us as the auditors. Auditor's responsibilities is to uh, form and express an opinion on the financial statements. I'm happy to say uh, your financial statements received an unmodified opinion. It's also referred to as a clean opinion. That's the most favorable opinion you can receive. Awesome. So it's, it's a, it means that the financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with accounting standards in the, U, in the U.S. And that, that's, you know, essentially what the audit is, is all about. Uh, we're, we're also required to communicate any deficiencies in internal controls, advise on accounting policies, uh, communicate any fraud or illegal acts that were noted during the audit. I'm happy to say we noted no fraud or illegal acts. <laughs> That's good. You would have heard by now. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, we better not be hearing it now. <laughs> um, there's no diff significant difficulties um, with management or during the conduct of the audit whatsoever. Uh, your finance director, uh, it's a pleasure to deal with. Um, there were no, there are no uncorrected statement, misstatements, meaning to say if we proposed an audit adjustment, that it has been adjusted. So there's no adjustments that we felt needed to be made that were not made. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no disagreements with management and of course uh, we're, we're independent with respect to the town. With that, I'll move to page five. This is the general fund, a budget to actual summary. This is a four-column presentation. The first column is your original budget as adopted. The second column is your final budget encompassing any revisions or, or amendments. The third column is your actual results. The fourth column is the variance between the final and the actual. So when the budget was adopted for the general fund, it was anticipated $8.5 million would be collected in revenues. Uh, the budget did not change that amount. Actual revenues received. 9,063,000. So that's a positive budgetary variance of $556,000. The next slide, I, I take you through some of the details um, on, that, on those variances. In the expenditure area of the budget, it was initial, initially anticipated the town would spend 8,668,000. That was revised slightly to 8,639,000. Actual expenditures were less than that, $8.2 million. And that's a, a positive variance with the budget of about 440000 Are you going to go into that a little bit too on that? I have a slide, separate right, slide on that as well. Other financing sources and uses, um, in the case of the town, they are mostly transfers to other funds. And, and in, the, in, in this case, you'll see there was a, a revision. The original budget called for transfers of 255000 that was all slated to go to the debt service fund to pay to pay down bonds, principal, and interest. Uh, it was revised to one million five hundred eighty-five thousand. The re the revisions were transfers to the capital fund to pay for some paving projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So actual transfers were just about the same as the budget one million five hundred forty-four thousand. When the budget was adopted, uh, you can see in the bottom left hand second number up, or second number after the after the zero. Uh, 418,000, that was the appropriation of fund balance. So had you spent every dollar you anticipated in the general fund and collected every dollar, your fund balance would have come <coughs> decreased by that 418,000. That number was revised to 1,718,000 because when you funded that capital project for paving, you took it from fund balance. So it was a planned use of that fund balance. Because you generated budgetary surplus throughout the year on the revenues of 556,000 and expenditures of 440,000 and 41,000 on the tr on the transfers, so you had a total budgetary surplus of a million dollars. The difference between those two was your actual use of fund balance during the year. So the general fund fund balance decreased uh, by 680,000. Right. So the difference between the 1718 and the 1037. 
Exactly. It's a 680, and that's what we have, that's what part of fund balance we actually used. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you started the year in the general fund six million five hundred ninety-seven thousand, end of the year five million nine hundred seventeen thousand. Right. So we have some more details on how we got here on page pages six and seven. Um, this is as it appears exactly in the financial statements. Uh, the revenue side of the budget, you see on um, eight million five hundred six thousand is what uh, I said where the total revenues budgeted. Uh, didn't change in the final budget, and actual revenues were nine million sixty three thousand, and you can again see the five hundred fifty six thousand variance. Just point, I'll just point out some of the some of the major variances that we see. Real property taxes, there was a variance of two hundred and forty eight thousand negative. Now we continue to go after that, right? I mean, is that is that property tax that yep. we didn't collect? Those are people who didn't who didn't pay. Yeah. So we the tax technically the tax department is supposed to go and after have, that. And this year you'll see the result of that. Right. Okay. That's what well, I thought. This, we is, this is versus that, right? budget, though, right? So you budgeted something that you weren't yep. able to deliver, right? <coughs> yeah. Not deliver was probably. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a rough word. There's a calculation that we do based on our collections for the year right. yeah, versus, right. and you defer part of it if you haven't collected enough. Right. Okay. So, the only th the, the key thing to keep in mind is um, all towns in, in Westchester County have to make the county and their school districts whole, right. which right. means you become a tax collecting entity in addition to a regular town. So you have a $15 million operating budget and you have to manage that, but you're also collecting uh, taxes for the county right. and the school, which is a much larger levy than you know than the town levy so right i just didn't, I, I, I just didn't want anybody out there when they see this if we put it on the website or anything to think that we're not going after it that there's just three hundred forty seven thousand dollars out there we did the tax department we'll go after it as we've sure. done in the past mm -hmm. but to but, that to that point is wow i'm very comfortable having a large fund balance because absolutely. We're, we're collecting 120 million dollars worth of taxes between all the in, school county and whatever <coughs> and we're on the line to essentially make them whole right? That's right whether we collect the taxes or not exactly but that that's the point is west not every county is like that right only that's, westchester right yeah my understanding only only, only county in the state yeah that's, really that's, every other county the schools have to collect their own taxes um or the county or makes the school whole. whole it's generally how it works the town doesn't have yeah to. Hmm. But but we have to, so I that, mean, that's our legal responsibility, so we do that. Well, collect forever. Three essentials. or four. But that yeah. does keep the, highway, the, uh, rather the uh, oh, yeah, the bond rate in the county very high, because so they're so guaranteed every what, dollar. What, what, what was that? Here. So we collect taxes for other school districts. Not just owners. Likely in North Salem. Yeah, sure, sure. Not all of their taxes. We don't do all of them. No, of town. And you're collecting for the county, like you said. You have school districts, $80 million. $80 million. And don't forget the fire district. That's it. Um, just a question, though, since it does, we, we <laughs> guarantee the county the taxes that everyone owes, whether they pay it or not. We have to give the county that amount from the town of Somers. That enables the county to have an excellent bond rating. Does that affect That's our bond story, rating though. at all? Or let's say if because people don't pay taxes, and we have to make it hold it. In any way, does that affect the rating of bond agencies? Of the town? Yeah. Um, I mean, it because would be, a, it would be a factor that they would consider, but, but there's a lien it on it. It would have to so be material. It would have to be material. You know, the other side is true. Also, if I collect something that I had to make whole on, I get to keep that. So, right? So this, could this could go the other way. This could go the other way. I think it will. Yeah, that's true. And so you do, you know, you do such a good job of collecting. So you get some favorability at times. I think okay, if there was a problem collecting, let's let like Jeff other get to it. <laughs> 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 have, I want to go home. Would affect your. your All right. Rating. If you have to borrow to, to make that's other, thing. that's possible. Yeah. And just the last thing I'll say on taxes, um, a lot of people all over towns in Westchester County, and I think throughout the state and possibly the country, came in to pay their taxes a little early this year. Yeah. As everyone yeah. knows, the tax laws are changing. They, they wanted to get that last tax deduction in. So we saw at all the towns we audit, including Somers, that there was some a rush, a little bit of a rush at the end of December there, yep. to uh, to, to, to okay. make yeah. some final payments. We, we did. A clue. Um, yeah. Just some other key line items: non-property taxes. Within that is the sales tax distributed to you by the county. Um, that was in excess of the budget by approximately 140 thousand. And franchise fees uh, are also in there, and that was in excess of the budget by approximately fifty thousand. 
Uh, departmental income, it, it's it's a, a lot of different numbers are in there. The fees collected by your various departments are in there. So engineering department uh, collected in excess of the budget by 89,000 and the parks and rec department collected about 73,000 in excess of the budget. Mm -hmm. So both of those numbers are, are within that variance of 189,000. License, licenses and permits um, is mainly your building permits that exceeded budget by the entire, that was almost it, 187,000 for your building permits. Um, the state aid line is, relates to mortgage tax. The state makes us put it in that, in that category that's the uniform system of accounts so they make you record it as part of state aid um, and that exceeded the budget by a hundred thousand so net between all these categories we come to the positive variance of five hundred fifty six thousand that's on the revenue side of your budget page seven is your expenditures and um, other financing sources and uses which in this case is our, our transfers to other funds the, the headings uh, didn't come through. They're kind of, they, they carry over from the, like you're looking at this as it's one page, if you will. So the headings are the same as they were on, on page six, as they are on page seven. Yeah. So you have your original budget, final, original. actual, and then variance again. Right. All right. So you'll see the expenditures in, somewhere in the middle of the page budgeted at 8668 compared to actual expenditures of 8199 and you'll see the, the variance of 440,000 on the, on the right side of the page. You really got that in various departments throughout the town. There's not one department that kind of stands out. Employee benefits. Uh, employee benefits would be the, the largest of the categories. That's mm -hmm. mostly your health insurance. Right. So that was about 121,000 under the budget. So that's the single uh, largest variance on the expenditure side. General government support, all your, your town finance, engineering, those type of uh, departments are within that category, and the variance is sprinkled around those various departments, totaling uh, 140,000. Just the employee benefits, is that because we, you're, you're, you're projecting what the increase will be by nice shift? A lot of it, yeah. And so we were conservative, and they actually came in at point two yes. less. Yep, that's okay. the largest point. Yeah. I'm sure it was comparable. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, that uh, the other financing uses is the transfers, and the, the change there is the the excess, the funding to the capital fund of a million. It was a million three twenty nine was the actual funding of that. Um, so that's that's a summary of the um, the expenditure side of the general fund. Uh, page eight is uh, general fund fund balance, and I have. Um, a five-year history here for you, which is a little more than what's in this, a couple extra years for you, just to you know, just to review. Good. You'll see the 2017 column on the left-hand side, total general fund fund balance five million nine hundred seventeen thousand. You'll see it's kind of ranged. Uh, and back in 13, it was four million one seventy-six. You've, you've seen as high as six million five ninety-seven uh, at the end of 2016. So. The components of fund balance are, are <coughs> non-spendable, restricted, assigned, and unassigned. Uh, non-spendable is prepaid expenditures, so just invoices you've paid that relate to the next fiscal year and will actually be charged against that budget. Because the cash is already out the door, you have to re uh, carve out a portion of your fund balance for that. So that's the 279000 You do have uh, some restricted for property damage funds. That really hasn't um, been used really in the in the past five years. That's 190, 93,000. And then um, your largest bucket is your assigned. The the key line on there is the subsequent year's expenditures. That's the amount you use to balance the next year's budget. So, at in the 17 budget, I'm sorry, when you adopted your 2018 budget. You utilized 410,000 of your fund balance to balance that budget, mm -hmm. and the previous year it was roughly the same amount. It was 418. So you're you've been the last two years using that amount of your general fund fund balance. But I would say over time, even though we're using it, the fund balance has been growing. Yeah, it's been required. which means which oh, yes. means that we're the following year we're saving money. 
and replacing the balance, right? Exactly. You're, you're replacing yeah, that 400,000 then and then, then, and then some. some. We replace it with a million exactly. this year. This year. No, we, sell, we spent 440, okay. But just one other point, though. Uh, so in 2017, we essentially uh, moved the signed, unassigned fund balance primarily to capital. Yes, exactly. Right, so that, that that. that's a big change there. Um, yeah. That was the paving, right? It's an anticipation of using it for paving. And yeah, so but we haven't used it yet, right? We used a large part of it last year. Okay. Um, and we <laughs> planned on using this. They haven't done a lot of paving this year, but whatever paving we were planning on this year or next year, we'll use that at fund balance, and then we'll have to decide going forward if we have to borrow. Yes. But we also have projects, you know, um, our share of grants that, you know, that we have uh, in the Marshall. works to pay for and other capital projects, roofs and uh, the highway department and here. Um, that are allocated and part of that 2.1 million. Okay. But the bulk of it is paving. Okay. And which and we haven't borrowed, so that's the which idea. we've that's done in the, the past. So that's, that's the other side of it. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. The question is whether we can continue to not. You borrow. won't be able to forever, right. but you know, at, at our pace, you know, we could get another year or two. Uh, using fund balance before we have to borrow. I mean, I'm okay with that because at the other side of that, you know, we have 10-year notes that are maturing. Yep, one matures so next year. So as one pays <laughs> off, you go, that's the whole that's, idea. That's so we had to get a year ahead there. Right. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Let me ask you this, though. Just are there any, uh, you know, with, with some of the projects that we're working on and the grants that we're doing, or, are there any contractual liabilities that we are incurring that require us to report the liability as a subsequent event or something of that? There, there are um, several long-term liabilities that don't get accounted for in your general fund because they're long-term liabilities. The pensions general for one or pensions is is your is your one of the big one it, it, for all municipalities in this area. The biggest number is the other post-employment benefit obligations, the health insurance for retirees. Sure. So that is a pay-as-you-go in your general fund. So as the cash is, is laid out, that's what you're budgeting for, and that's what's hitting your general fund. However, there's a future liability out there because your employees have already earned those benefits, and they're going to live for X number of years into the future. What those payouts now, what those payouts will be in the future are estimated by your actuary. And in the past, the, the uh, members of your firm that have been here have cautioned the town, while your fa finances generally were solid, were conservative, we're not spending crazy, and our, our revenue projections generally are in the ballpark, they have cautioned us about the long-term expenditure, exactly what you're saying, with people who work for the town, who receive benefits, um, and hopefully for a very long time, obviously. I was just wondering, since you brought it up, uh, what your perspective on that, has it changed from the past at all? Because those ob long-term obligations have increased over time. Obviously, as health care costs go up 9 or 10 percent, health insurance becomes a huge issue. And of course, I'm sure every town you work with, every school district, probably every corporation that has a benefit like that. Uh, identifies that as the unknowable in the future that you have to prepare for or otherwise you are going to be in some big trouble. So just wondering your perspective on that, if there's anything from the past you want to bring us up on or what you see going forward. So nothing's changed from a funding point of view with regard to that. You're still going to have to budget the, the cash outlay and, and the cost, like you said, the costs have been going up eight, nine, sometimes 10% in recent years. So you're gonna to have to deal with that in a short-term basis. There, there's a, a significant accounting change um, coming for you, coming for the town next year. And we've just seen it um, with all, I was telling Bob bef before the meeting that I've, we've just been seeing it with all the school districts had to implement this new accounting standard for the June 30th, 18 year ends. Um, th this is really just a reporting change but it is significant in that they're forcing uh, municipalities to use certain actuarial cost methods that are more conservative than the ones you're allowed to use now. Okay, so when we come to you next year, I'll be reporting to you numbers that look worse than they do now. And I can say that 
pretty plainly for any municipality I go to. Um, they've been increasing. Is that on the revenue expense side or both? It's just an expenditure, a long-term liability point of view that will impact the expenditures. So that's an accrual a balance sheet presentation. Exactly. That's not a cash presentation. But if they change the methods of discounting and it increases the rate of payment, our expenses can go up, right? On a long-term basis. Not, you know, it, it won't impact your general fund um, in okay. that any one year. Your general fund is still going to be impacted by the cash outlay. Right. And that's all the general fund will be impacted by. But on a long-term basis, um, yes, it's, it's an expenditure and it's a long-term liability. So from a full accrual point of view, uh, from a commercial entity point of view, um, it puts most municipalities in a, in a deficit situation. It looks like they, they don't have enough assets to fund their liabilities. Right, right. <laughs> so as we, That's great. as we go forward, well, it's tr I know, it's the, the expenditures paper. for that crowds out other expenditures. Oh, absolutely. And it just says the national deficit can crowd out other um, borrowing and spending in the Right economy. now the number so is $27 million. Dollars. This is it. So the total liability out there right now is $27 million. Right. So ba basically what they're doing is they're taking off balance sheet off uh, balance sheet items and saying you have to show them. Exactly. Right? But to your point, two things. One, the unknown in, in the health expense is sort of the rate. But we could forecast the retirement, retirees, retirees, right? So the number of retirees are going up as well as the rate that we have to pay in the post-retirement benefit world. Right, mm -hmm. and you report on some sort of a. Is there a census in this? In this that says, uh, yeah, 139 people on the uh, uh, on the health insurance. 57 of them are retired, so plus 36 spouses. And it, so, so that's a compelling. That's a compelling number. You know, when the public puts their mind around what what you're paying for. Now you're paying for a staff to run the level of service that we're providing. Plus, you're fulfilling your ob your obligations to uh, to your retirement and contracts, and the outflow during 17 was about 770 thousand for that was the cash outflow that was the impact to your general fund budget. Cash outflow for retiree health insurance. How much was that? 770 thousand hmm. dollars. So that's the ongoing um, in the that's, run rate. That's yeah. that's what you put. That's what you're budgeting for. Right. That's what you're budgeting for. That. Per as a percentage of the operating budget, that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, has increased as a percentage of the operating budget, has increased each year. Yes? I would, I don't know for sure, but my guess would be yes, because this is going up at 9% and your budget's probably going right. up. You're probably trying to stay within the 2% cap. Right. Yes. Right. So it's definitely growing as, as a percentage faster. Right. So as you fund that, that it eats into your ability for, else. Right. For, for current for current employees and, and current benefits right. and, uh, and and money for paving or whatever capital right. whatever else the town needs to do right. so it, it's always there um, yeah it, it, it's always it's always there and unless the you know municipalities started taking away these benefits um, it's it's going to be there you, you, you almost can't they have to negotiate it but you can't because of Taylor laws and Things of that nature, you can't unwind. That's it, almost impossible to unwind. Okay, good. So I'll just briefly take you through on uh, page nine. That was your general fund, so I kind of covered everything. That's a you know, <coughs> synopsis of the general fund. Uh, page nine of the of PowerPoint is all your other funds, and I just have a uh, fund balance here. Okay. So on the on the left hand side of the page. There's 2017 fund balance for highway, debt service, capital fund, and your non-major governmental funds, which consists of a, several different funds. Your library fund is in there. Um, your special districts funds, which includes water, sewer, street lighting. Uh, your special purpose fund, which is your um, various trusts, like your parkland money that's restricted is in there. and and that, that's it. So those, those are your other funds besides the general fund. You'll see the highway fund on the left side of the page has total fund balance of about one million six, <clears throat> And that was up slightly from a million four from 16. So you did have a positive year in the highway fund. And 50,000 of that fund balance was utilized to balance the 18 budget. 
so that's an important number to keep in mind. That's on top of the general fund number we mentioned before, 410. Um, your debt service fund, it's, it, that's money set aside only to be used for, for debt payments. That's 340000 Your capital projects fund, it's, it's 18000 there, earmarked for specific projects. And then all your other funds are within that non-major category. Uh, you have about 550000 library and 446,000 special districts. The largest uh, fund is the special purpose fund at 2.4 million, and that's restricted for park lands, mostly restricted for park lands. So, the rec so, so rec yeah. Yeah. Rec right. right. So, so I should look at this general fund at 5.9 million, and these other fund balances of 5.6 million as additive. In addition to, yes. So that's combined, so we have over $10 million and in, 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 in fund balances. Yes. And our, uh, you know, our expenses are 15 million. Our revenues are sort of, let's call it seven or eight. Um, so net to the taxpayer is seven. I mean, we're like totally in good shape. Let me ask you about <laughs> the uh, library. It it's a long way to get to it, but yeah. Well put. The uh, library budget about um, a million. The fund balance there is 515. Uh, is is that in any way noteworthy? Um, you know, they, obviously they have from January, February, March, half of April, really, where you know they're not taking, we're not taking any taxes, and they have to cover all their expenses. So they certainly uh, need a fund balance in there to, to keep <laughs> going with the library. Uh, do, do you notice anything about that? Is there anything there that's noteworthy that we should take account of? Is that unusually high or low? It is a large percentage of their budget uh, for the library. But you know that that could be kept there for cash flow, as you said. Yeah. You know, because they'd be able to support their budget for half the year yeah. on that five hundred thousand, five hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Um, I've seen other municipalities not keep well, anything in their library fund, control. but that's really a, a you know it's a decision that okay. management and the board would it would, would have to make. Yeah, yeah, to to take all the fund balance out and use it and. You know, <coughs> probably would be short-sighted. It's 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 yeah, always but, nice to have fund balance. But yeah. we, what we like to know is is sort of is there a is there percentage. a percentage a number like we've been told we're at, I think what we say we're like twenty four percent right now. They say that's usually a comfortable, not too high, not too low. Is there you know is there a number that is too high? I mean, fund balance is it's not just supposed to sit there. I mean, it's some would some would say that there is a number that's too high. Um, as, as an accountant and an auditor, I like to see high numbers. Mm -hmm. So um, I agree with that 20% being a nice, comfortable fund balance number. We're talking about for the town. With that. For the town yeah, for the yeah. town. Yeah, I'm just making a general statement. <coughs> uh, usually that applies to the general fund. <coughs> um, I, I like that 20% number as, as, a, as a comfortable number. 10%, I start to feel yeah. if anything bad happens, sure. you don't have much to absorb the impacts. You mentioned the property tax collection. You have to, you have you to make good on those taxes. That's an outflow of several million dollars, I'm sure, mm -hmm. um, every April, I, I think. Yep. You have to, you have to, you know, make good on that. And if you don't have the cash in the bank, you're going to have to issue short-term debt to do that. So you need, you need at least that in fund balance just to make those payments. Right. Um, I don't, you know, is it, mil it's at least several million. Yeah, but we've never had in my tenure. I've never had to do that. <clears throat> this is a nice position to be so in. you've been able to use your fund balance to make yes to make those payments I mean I think his question was whether that percent <clears throat> 50 percent is noteworthy in any way because it's a small dollar amount in re in, in regards to the t budget in its entirety it doesn't stand out to okay. me as being uh, unique or unusual in other way I would also say you know you, you guys all know this this contributes to a double a rating when Moody's looks at this they look at fund balance. They look at you know strength of the town. Is it growing? What's the tax base look like? And uh, you know when when things start to go the other way, they look at those deltas and they they, they maybe weigh against you. So you know, I you know I feel, I'm happy with it. I'm I'm loving oh, I'm this. Dope. I'm I'm loving this. Um, and just one other, one other comment. The school district, though, has a 4% on their side. Fund Schools balance. are extremely restricted um, as to what kind of fund balances they can retain. It's 4% of percent. their next year's budget. Unassigned. How, unassigned. However, <clears throat> they're allowed um, to have restricted funds for certain items that other municipalities can't have, like tax tertiaries. Right. So 
uh, school districts in this area tend to have significant certiorari reserves. Right. Um, they have employee benefit accrued liability reserves, um, which is, you know, compensated absences and that sort of thing. They set aside money for that. Um, they have capital reserves. You've, you folks have kind of done it as a, uh, an assignment or a management designation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. School districts can do that with the approval of the voters in a restricted way. Yes. Yeah. So they have other types of fund balance that they can use um, that towns and, and <coughs> counties don't need to use. All right, good. That's excellent. Yeah. So, Jeff, I have a question. And, and when, when Bob and I uh, sit down and talk finances, I, I have a sign that I put up on my desk, AAA or bust. <laughs> we, are, we are currently a double A1, right? Yes. What's it going to take to get that top rating from Moody's? What about the second? One notch away. No, one, one, one notch away? Yeah. Right. I mean, your fund balance is strong. Um, I, I honestly don't know the answer. Well, maybe you can give him a call. Is it rich? What's holding no. it up? <laughs> <laughs> your fund balance is very strong. You know, it, they certainly shouldn't be taking away any points for, for your fund balance. Um, Sometimes they look, they look at the the tax, what the type of tax base you have, and maybe they say, oh, you don't have enough commercial base, and that's yeah. nothing that the or town board can, or, yeah. you're not growing enough, or they look at those type of things, and that could be hurting, you know, dropping you from the AAA. What's the real real implication of that in terms, of, obviously it affects your bond rating. Right. So what is the implication of that in terms of uh, points on that? How, how much are we talk? I don't know about? off the top of Negligible, my head. Negligible, like, with, with our points? debt level, it's debt pretty level minimal, more. I think, uh, the effect of one, one That's what I Rates are still fairly low yeah. in, in the bond, well, you know, in the, in the municipal yeah. bond market that I've that, that I've witnessed. Um, it's probably a neg negligible yeah, amount yeah, with our debt level. It's, it's, Although you'd expect those rates to be going up, like all rates seem to be going. They up have been going up. They have so, been going up. Absolutely. Do you recommend to towns or schools that you deal with that if you were going to bond for something? this would be the good time to do it before some of those rates hit? I think it is a good time. Or the past two or three years definitely has been an opportune time to One do that. Think. Some schools have gone out and done that, and the voters have to approve that. Right. Um, but you definitely, in the you know now and over the past three years, you would have been taking advantage of excellent um, bond rates. And still, you still have that opportunity now. I mean, the rates are still relatively low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's here to, you know, attest to the financial statements, not give us a forecast. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah, performance is <laughs> I'm not an economist. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Good yeah, stuff. Good, new good news. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. We're in good shape. Thank you for doing this. Uh, yeah, I like that. Right. I like this that. Made it okay. Excellent. Thank so you. So are these accounting yeah, uh, that's going to cost us some more money? To Unfortunately, your actuary may have a little upcharge for you. Um, you can talk to your actuary about that. Okay. Yeah, we have a pretty good, reasonable rate with our actuary, so I don't okay. think it'll be. But other than that, very okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. All right. Okay, hey, moving along. No paperwork. Hey, Bob. Good job. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Bob. All right. Absolutely. Yeah, Triple A or bust. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. More pats on the back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is Westchester EMS fly car discussion with uh, Al Kim. Come on Al, up, Al. How are you? Hi, Welcome. Hi, Al. Hey, Al. How are you? Good. Okay. Flying car. It's going to be his, uh, you know, <laughs> razzle dazzle. Oh, yeah, just a little. And a little Thank you. In case you don't know, but I'm thinking everybody here knows. Thank you. I want a flying car, Al. <laughs> so, Al, um, why don't you give us an overview of your service for the public? You sure. Know, we're very much involved with you, but um, not everybody knows exactly how EMS works. Right. I understand we have an ambulance, but we also have a contract with you folks. Yeah. So EMS in general, that's a very broad term. And uh, to the lay public, uh, you call 911, someone comes when you need the help. And that's usually as far as people know. But it's, it's uh, very broad. 
Um, it even involves in the term EMS, emergency medical services, encompasses the call taker and the 911 operator because they often have to give directions for CPR um, and a lot of pertinent information on the patient's condition is uh, ascertained during the call. So that's, that's part of it. The, the lay public is part of EMS. You know, the public uh, automatic defibrillators that we have in public buildings and schools, uh, ball fields, that's all part of it as well, uh, bystander CPR and first aid and schools and, and those things count. Um, and then you have what they call, you know, the people who show up when you call 911. And in our area, uh, we have volunteers that actually provide ambulances. And so there's a two-tiered system in EMS jargon, and two-tiered means there's a basic level, or BLS, and an ALS, which stands for Advanced Life Support. Most, most uh, cities uh, and towns have a two-tiered system, sometimes three if you include first responders in uh, fire engines, like in New York City, just to kind of stop the clock if, if they have capacity. Uh, around uh, Somers and our surrounding communities, the way it's set up is the 911 call gets uh, uh, dispatched, the ambulance uh, is dispatched uh, to the volunteer agencies, be it a volunteer fire district or department or a volunteer ambulance corps um, in, in a lot of towns as well. And they're professionals, but they're just not paid, they're volunteers. And, and they will respond uh, in an ambulance, and the paramedics are often dispatched simultaneously, but the, we talked about dispatching first. And so if the county is dispatching, in our case, that's the case in Somers, the program that's used by the dispatchers, it's called EMD, Emergency Medical Dispatching, and they, they try to discern from the caller what level of response uh, should, should be sent uh, to that particular call. There are a lot of caveats. I mean. For, for liability for the protocol for EMD, there's uh, a need generally to have the caller be nearby the patient so they can answer some of the questions on either behalf of the patient or be the patient themselves. With the advent of cell phones, as we drive by the car accident and we just kind of call it in, uh, that, would, that would result in an all, all hands response because they don't know what exactly the, the condition is of, of the injured. Anyway, so the BLS ambulance gets dispatched, um, and then our paramedics, it, depending on the level of uh, call, uh, critical or urgent or come in as difficulty breathing, uh, versus, let's say, what comes across is a pinky sprain, or I hope not people don't call 911 for that, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> um, and they would send the paramedics. The paramedics ride alone. Uh, they have flying cars. Uh, they, they're in SUVs and they're often called uh, fly cars, I guess because they run around um, by themselves uh, intercepting uh, the ambulances on calls. The idea was, and it still is, that the paramedics should not be the first on scene. I mean, the, the two-tiered system is designed so that first responders, lay people, the BLS volunteer ambulances would be there first. <coughs> Let them check out the patient, the scene, and if they need paramedics, keep them coming in. If they need paramedics and they weren't assigned, call for one. Or if they're coming anyway, cancel them, if they're not needed, that is. Um, often, because, you know, the way things are, our paramedics are in service 24-7, and they're moving about. Uh, they post and move about, uh, depending on their availability. And the volunteers, myself included, in another town, you know, are home. So by the time we get to our rig, start her up and wait for our partner and go, there's a little bit of what they call a lag or shoot time is a little extended. In Somers, you have staff on duty all the time. So that works where they arrive uh, quite often before or at the same time as the paramedics. Paramedics are high, uh, advanced level. They, they carry uh, an assortment of medications, invasive medications. Um, I won't get into it on uh, the tape, uh, the radio, uh, audio here, but uh, there's, there's control substances involved as well. Uh, they perform a very invasive airway management uh, procedure called endotracheal intubation, uh, often done in hospitals or in the operating room. 
And they can do that for patients whether they're still conscious or not. They carry um, intravenous access tool, uh, including a drill to go into your bone, uh, to the marrow, so that cause there are some people with very, very poor vasculature and we need to get IV fluids in. Uh, especially in some, you know, rural areas where the distance to an emergency room is, is greater than, let's say, in Midtown. Um, so that's pretty much the EMS system that we operate in. The paramedics, the unique thing about the fly car here, and I'm sure Rick would uh, point that out anyway, is it's shared. You know, and it's a very unique uh, service that in all the years I've been involved in EMS, it's over 30 years, it's unique. Uh, there aren't any that I'm aware of that multiple municipalities, eight of, eight of us, share three cars 24, seven days a week um, with a formulary that works for everybody. And um, rather than having, you know, one town having one paramedic unit, mm -hmm. they have access to three, often four. Um, even for slower towns uh, or less busy towns, there are We're times. a busy town, right? You are. Somers is the busiest. The busiest. Right. If there's yeah. A charge shows anything. So Pound Ridge and my town, North Salem, is not as busy, uh, frankly. But it depends just because it's not busy in, in, in uh, uh, aggregate. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, you know, calls don't occur at the same time. Right? Sure. So in that uh, instance, you want to have a, a multiple, uh, you know, unit service uh, to be able to do that. We do monitor it closely. Um, Rick <laughs> and uh, the other town supervisors have become our resident real experts in understanding the dynamics of uh, system status management, which is how the paramedic units don't sit. If one gets a call, the remaining move. Um, and we watch them move, you know. Well, it makes sense, but, you know, a lot of places don't do that. Um, and it turns out, because we collect data through electronic uh, medical records, that, and we just recently were able to prove it, we assumed it, is that when a unit is on a call, already engaged, and another call drops in the area, and the second name, uh, paramedic gets a call, response time goes up. It takes longer on the second unit. And if both of them are on calls, and there's only one unit in the system, when that unit gets a call, the response time is even greater. Um, the interesting model for the fly car is because it's on a break-even funding basis by the towns, we, and we don't bill, you know, patients for it. Uh, it's a, uh, you can't bill for paramedic services in a fly car. You can bill for transports in an ambulance. So what we are looking at is keeping call volumes low. I mean, it turns out the model is, is uh, highly touted as the one area where having healthier people benefits the service. Oftentimes, um, including some very high dense urban areas, you, you don't often see call volumes uh, being, being battled to, 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 to be brought down. Uh, there's a revenue component to it as well. But we do a great job with that, and, and the town supervisors sort of keep our feet to the fire on, on looking at our data. My, my purpose to visit here was, was uh, Supervisor uh, Morsi invited me to <coughs> give a little background. I haven't That's been great. here in that a long great. time. And give you some trivia as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> some trivia? Trivia, yeah, this <laughs> data. <laughs> yeah. Data. Well, the number's big. Yeah. We're, we're 20, we're, what did I just read 27 here? We're 27%. Yes, you are. But we're bigger than Mount Kisco, and yeah. but that's because maybe there are other services there? No, no. We're the, we're, this is a paramedic response. Yeah. So uh, Somers is the highest call volume. We Why are. would you say that? Heritage. Heritage. Her no, just say, well, is that it? Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, it seems to be the case. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No one is for the fire department. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what they always say. It is. Yeah. It, it, yeah, the I most would. number of calls north of White Plains yeah. is Somers. They as the new building, the new, uh, like the Avalon and some of the over there up the there. Is that Not okay? yet, but, you know, right now the standout is uh, Heritage Hills. Heritage it's Hills. a community mm -hmm. onto a community. Sure. 4,700 people. So we have, yeah, um, senior housing up there. Um, one of them is 55, is 62. 65 and older. 62. 62. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
But <clears throat> my question, you know, a lot of people get, you know, I see an ambulance come by and here's an, an EMS uh, rig behind it. You know, is that the best use of resources? Yeah. Well, now we've been told, you know, the more skilled person may not be, may not be needed. And I know, you know, Alan is, uh, people go over statistics you know, when we meet and uh, a lot of times those cars will get called off once the ambulance gets there and says, you know, we can handle this. But Al, you were saying the assessment, though, was done at the county when the 911 is called? You mean the yeah, dispatching the part? the dispatching part. Yes. Is that where they're deciding whether mm -hmm. it's a, a very serious event or a minor, a minor event. event? Yeah. And they're all trained to do that. They are, they are trying to do that. Um, trained. And trained. They, tra they are trained. trained. This EMD, Emergency Medical Dispatching, is an actual proprietary program. It's, it, the name of it is called EMD, and the county uses it. Um, in order for the, the company that they use, EMD, to back them up in court, you know, the county, they have to follow a strict set of quality Procedure. metrics, you know, and, and program, uh, or else they won't be represented. So they, they do follow it. Sometimes, much to our you know, dismay, we wish they, they wouldn't send paramedics on so many motor vehicle crashes. Because uh, often it turns out, um, we do provide that data, they're, they're not used or needed uh, subsequent to being dispatched. Uh, so oh, okay. again, we're trying to say, why don't we lessen the times the paramedics are sent on calls? But they have a protocol they have to follow as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and call volume is going up year over year over year. We haven't added resources, so what we're working on is what can we do to, to mitigate paramedic volume, usage, turnaround from the hospital quicker, um, you know, uh, strategically placing the units so that we could maximize, uh, you know, their, their capacity uh, before there's a tipping point where we do have to add resources. It's a science. When you it, say it is a science, yeah. They're they're going up. Is are you saying in northern Westchester, so or all of all Westchester? over, all over West, all Westchester? All over, Westchester. Mm -hmm. and is that going up faster than population? Let's say, I, I mean, I don't know. A number the of last census we have, we have is from 2010 that we used yeah. as a part of our uh, yeah. calculations for the formula. Okay, so yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah. It's I don't. I'm not sure. Right. I know the. The 684 corridor certainly is busier than I, oh my gosh, uh, yes. you know, recall. Definitely. Yes, it is. So, you know, and there's a, a lot of uh, uh, car accidents on 684 that, yeah. that's, that's increasing. Yeah. And, and that would be a driving factor, you think? Oh, sure. Yeah. In fact, outside of Somers, the highest call volume is motor vehicle accidents. Mm -hmm. All the other towns. The outlier for the call type, which you have, is uh, different in Somers. Interesting. Motor vehicle accidents are right there, but it's not sure. the highest. Mm -hmm. You know that we, we live in a time when, you know, there's so much uh, criticism in America and so many thoughts about, uh, in and, and a negative way, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're pulling apart, where the people don't like each other, the, the, the atmosphere isn't good, etc. But I think it's, it's sometimes it strikes me how we take for granted in America, the things that we, we shouldn't. And I think emergency services are one of those. It's just amazing. Yeah. And the quality of people who come uh, to an accident, who work in your profession and others, and we take that for granted. You go to another country, you can't always take that for granted. Oh, and, yeah. Really? Uh, you know, we're really lucky in some of the things that we have in terms of, of public safety in, in this country. We should not take it for granted, I'm not trying to lecture anybody, it just strikes me every once in a while, and having had an incident in my family, where I go, oh my gosh, that was so, I'm so lucky these people came and helped us, that um, I just, just want to make that point. Okay. I always try to keep it in mind. We're yeah, lucky. You do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank out tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, if you have, I can ever uh, answer any more questions, you know, Feel free to reach out. Yeah, Rick line. comes to our meetings. I'm sure he wouldn't mind you joining him once in a while. Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to bring my <laughs> finance director <laughs> down next Thank time you. we go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Appreciate it. All right. Rick, um, good to see you in person. Good to see you, too. Thank you, Mr. All right. Thank you. Good to see you, so we, we are fortunate to have um, two levels of service. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it is.
It's <laughs> very odd. Right. Strange. Thank you. I mean, that would be obvious. He's dead. Uh, right. Not obvious. Not obvious. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but I'm not positive. <laughs> Let's wait on that one. <laughs> Here we need the paramedic. <laughs> Yeah, so we're now at number three under town board. Nobody else speaking. No, this and this is the uh, the moment in our town board meeting where the town clerk presents the 2019 tentative budget to the town. I will take the invisible budget and I will put it over here. Thank you for presenting it. Yes, thank you, thank you for that. Um, so we will, um, Except according to our our calendar. <coughs> the uh, presentation of the tentative budget and <coughs> next week will be the next item on our 2019 budget is to set elected official um, salaries and with the hopes of wrapping everything up in uh, December but we have to oh, we have to <laughs> we need a budget. No hope. I say with the hopes ah <laughs> uh, yes well, I heard a voice <laughs> She who must be obeyed. <laughs> and when when are we scheduling that public hearing? For the first meeting of December. Okay. So we'll set a. Um, is that a motion or? Okay. So we'll set set December sixth for our public hearing on our 2019 budget. Thank you, Patty. Good. Okay, the uh, number four, name a private roads in Somers Crossing discussion. So this is um, the de um, developer presents us with the names of a number. C Sienna Way. Let's see. Somers Crossing Drive, Sienna Drive, Spring Meadow Court. Elderberry Court, Amber Lane. So, um, just are we just by way of protocol? Are we saying yay or nay to these, or are we picking one? Picking no, they're all. If you look, there's a map of it. Right. Yeah. And so they I think put where, where they want the roads. The question is, okay, is so he asking our permission to this? Or just I mean, technically, they're private um, roads. They're private roads, right? Well, so no. we, we have to refer these out to right. our highway. Gotta make sure that they're not somewhere else in town. Yeah, that we're not so too it, elderberry. Not well, that would be, I think, <laughs> we've seen that in the past. Horton Drive, Horton Road. Daisy, right. Daisy, yeah, well, we're not going to Drive. Daisy, yeah, that was a good one. We're not like Heritage, Heritage Hill, so are we? A B C D E F G. You could hide be, people up there and never be I'll found. Be, I'm, I'm again going to lobby for Lynn Adams Way somehow some way but if that uh, is not within our jurisdiction then it's not well you could oh, you yeah, could yeah. ask them I mean you could certainly put it out to the Just builders yeah okay yeah I, th I think we had um, we had discussions about actually it might have been Lynn Adams at, at another uh, being Reynolds. Yeah. and I, I can't th remember who it was for Reynolds it went to Reynolds Drive or Reynolds Road really? we recently named a Street, Reynolds Drive, or Reynolds Road. Did we? Yeah. I, I mean, Clayton Boulevard, is it Clayton Osborne? Right, that's Clayton Osborne. Mm -hmm. That was really done by the town board, I think. Benjamin right. Green, one of the first. Well, that ha that's because there were two green lanes in, in town. Yeah. So one of them had to pick up Benjamin. But I'll make a uh, motion to refer this out to uh, our highway, police department, fire department, town historian, and engineering department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Uh, number five, Somer District, a uh, lot five of the Somers Realty Subdivision, number three. So, in essence, what this is is a <coughs> call. Um, the Somers Realty had set aside uh, an acre off of Mayapack Avenue. Yeah for use by the Somers Fire Department. Um, now we're at the point where they want to deed that property, get it off their um, subdivision, um, and get it over to the, uh, the fire department. So um, I had met with the um, commissioners of the fire district um, a couple of weeks ago and had a discussion. And I said, uh, 
Somers Realty is wanting to deed it there. Not sure if they want to deed it to the town or deed it to the, the fire district. And uh, I said that you know the town has really no no use of the acreage. Um, however, did they? And originally, I guess they were thinking about putting a structure there. <coughs> well, they years, wanted, years ago, they, they wanted a firehouse there. Yeah, they yeah. Wanted, but at yeah. one point, somebody was going to build one. But then, you know, it was proximity to Amawak and. But bottom line is, um, well, they present us with all sorts of response times and so with like, the building up. Yeah, there. they wanted them there specifically for like the Mew, what's now the Mew's right. Avalon across the street. That was there and over the hill. So are they right. contemplating putting a service system up there? Yeah. They yeah. are okay. contemplating and not putting taking this and selling emergency it. medical no, response. No, 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 no. But this is what it was originally contemplated for. For to what? Put it, to put a. Uh, to put a firehouse. Uh, firehouse yeah. up or at least, <laughs> if not a firehouse, I think they wanted somewhere to stage an ambulance. Yeah, I don't, that's I'm not exactly sure there was right. a firehouse. I think it was more of an ambulance for medical yeah. response. Yeah, it could be a right. garage or, right. or what have you. I don't think they're going to put a big... Right. And that was part of the whole Somers, I mean, the Clant Hamlet plan, right? Yes, that was not part of the original plan. It that wasn't, no. It no. was part of the During plan. the course no. of the conversation, no. it came up, I think some people came here and said, hey, you're going to have a lot came more and said, incidents. Or fire chief came and said. This many people, people. Especially, if it's, well, especially if it's a senior, 55, 62. Sure, that's their <laughs> thing. And they said, you know, based on that, we think that you need that we need something closer. Yeah, right. So, right. so exactly. in your response, yes. Yeah, you know. All right, so it's, this is really a discussion about that. We're going to move ahead to advise Somers Realty to uh, deed it to Somers Fire District. Yes. Yes. Number six, authorize the supervisor uh, to approve going forward for a bid for one Chevy Volt to be paid for by our NYSERDA grant, dated October 22nd from um, Bob Kehoe, our finance director. We're going to make that the police chief's car. Who is this guy? Yeah, he's person. not interested in those cars. <laughs> you know, and I got to tell you something. I know oh. I told you guys what I just bought, and I said the same thing yeah. to the chief at the budget hearings. These things are have pet, man. I mean, I bought a, a hybrid, and uh, it goes. Yeah, they if go. you want it to go, it goes. Right. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm surprised because if. No, I think his concern about is uh, getting in and out of their smaller vehicles. I'm you know? kidding, though. Just, no, that was, oh, that that's, that's what no, I know you were. But, no, but originally we wanted to give them one. Yeah. We, did, we did talk about getting one for the police department. Yeah, that was in the grant application. Right. As it stands now. Right, so, They're peppy. so this one the um, <laughs> will be uh, sent over to the nutrition Don't program. Nutrition. Uh, in addition to um, charging station over there. Right. right. We have to have one available to the public as part of this grant. But we... Pay the electric. We charge. It's not a. It's not a free. You didn't say you can't charge, but one has to be. We have to have. Yeah, charge. charge you know, yeah. Somebody's just planting themselves over there with their yeah, car. We, so in other words, we, we don't lock see, it uh, like we lock this one. Deputy what, Supervisor yeah, Garrity over there yeah. does <laughs> steal electricity. Well, I don't have a plug. I think we're gonna, gas. I think we're gonna charge. The question is, we're gonna meter it. How does no. it what is that? Well, you're that's charging the car. That's a Sirico right? joke. Is that what? Oh, it generates it. Generates its own battery. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. It's really cool. Okay, so we're going to move that to the consensus agenda. Okay. Uh, authorized supervisor to execute the following: the Candela System Corporation amendment to the contract for installing solar panels at the highway garage, per memo dated October 25th, from Sarah Dim, okay. Director of Planning. I'd like to make a motion to uh, amend that contract. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And then B is federal aid local projects utility work agreement regarding the relocation of the town of Somers sewer mains located on Hill Boulevard in Yorktown <coughs> for email dated October 17th from Adam Smith, superintendent of water and sewer. And we'll, uh, we can move that to the um, consensus in general as well. Number eight, authorize supervisors to adopt the sexual harassment policy for all employers, employers in New York State in the town of Somers, effective immediately. Uh, we'll move that to the consensus agenda. And um, I know in the document that we circulated, um, Tony you know, we named an individual yeah, a when it really should be a title. So right. that has already right. been. Uh, amended. Good catch, Councilman Sirico. Yes. 
Just goes to show you. Actually, yeah, I just want to show homework. I was reading it. That was the one document you picked this week. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, consideration of amending the zoning regulation section 170-3 to add that a mature cockerel <laughs> be defined. This is when you know you live in a small as town. When it starts, <laughs> as when it starts crowing, dated October 2nd from Thomas Tuma, uh, building inspector. Yeah, um, he knows more than I, so. And we'd like to uh, set a public hearing for this uh, <laughs> Change. Uh, so does that have to change? Right? <laughs> yeah. Is that going to be a public hearing? Or? Yeah, no, it will go to consensus, but we can set the public hearing. Yes. Yeah. For December. For, for December okay. meeting? December, December 13th, yeah. 13th. Okay. Uh, oh, because it's a zoning regulation. Right. right. Yeah, number 10 consideration of adopting resolution either endorsing Putnam counties or based on Riverkeeper's model resolution related to concerns over the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers proposal for dealing with storm surge in New York Harbor per memo dated October 9th from the Somers Open Space Committee. I had a question about this one. Yeah. Is the proposal in general to somehow, some way, dam up the Hudson River so that Manhattan doesn't flood, but everybody north of Manhattan does flood. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, I think they have these um, actually outside of uh, Stanford Harbor. They're giant plates uh -huh. that stay on the bottom, uh -huh. and then to prevent a storm surge, they raise, raise these plates. <coughs> now, <clears throat> um, I haven't heard that there's any issues with Stanford Harbor, but certainly... You know, the Hudson River um, holding the flow back even for five minutes doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, um, so we just have to decide if we want to yeah, sign, well, think... sign on to the resolution. On to Putnam or okay. there's two though, right? Putnam or Riverkeeper. Right, Riverkeeper was the draft. Um, and Putnam is, a, is an example of what it would what ours would read like, we'd just take Putnam out and put Somers. Somers. And they're looking to what? Increase the comment period and con right to go public comments, right? The Army Corps of Engineers on a, on a, on a, on a tear to get this done. Yeah, then, then Putnam's asking to go from 70 to 90 days right. for comments. And the concept is it was in a storm surge, if they would put these in place, it would back up the Hudson and in theory come, would certainly back into the reservoir systems. but. There was no studies being, there's no studies. Right, there, there's not, not that there's not studies, I think that it, we just haven't been given any information. There, right. there might be studies, they just haven't shared them. There you go. That's, yeah. Well, so if well we're asking for more information. So yeah. More of it, right. Well, that's what the resolution it, we'll, uh, is. Right. Yeah, I would agree. We'll draft that up. So that you'll draft it up for the next meeting? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Well, we base it, does it matter if we, it says based on either Putnam or well, the Hudson River that, keepers. Right. I think basically what um, the difference between them is is one says Putnam County, one says you know, River keepers. Oh. Um, well, when I said either, I wasn't sure if there was something I had to pick one or I the think other. They're, or they're, they're, they're the, yeah, the well, same rationale. I, I think Putnam's is a bit is is shorter. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that's Putnam's, and I'm guessing this is. River keepers, keepers and is a bunch more yeah, whereas. I mean, they give it to whereas is uh, estimated 30 yeah. billion to 50, 50 billion. billion to build this. That sounds incredible. It does. <laughs> okay. I mean, so rising sea, rising seas are going to affect all sorts of uh, places in New York City and what happened everything you can't else. Fight the tide. You can't. You can't. Well, they're the attempting to here. <laughs> so we'll move that. But, yeah, I mean, I, I would go with, I mean, Putnam is sort of short and sweet. Give us more time, give us more information. Um, At the end of the okay, day, we'll, the we'll this is to the Army Corps of Engineers where we're expressing yes. our point this of view. This is federal funded money. I wonder if the congressman has been in on this. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so we'll um, Outgoing or have, have something, have something or? for the uh, <laughs> consensus agenda for next week. <laughs> All right. Consideration Incoming. of a proposed invasive uh, plant local law per memo dated October 25th from Thomas Tuma, building inspector. Um, so as you would recall, at one of our <coughs> work sessions, we had um, a resident from uh, Purdy's, I believe it was, tell us about um, bamboo. 
right? Yeah. And how how invasive it is, and um, you, well, it's really outlawed, it but underneath. it's here. And uh, many municipalities, especially on Long Island, have adopted local laws um, to try to regulate its, its use. And if, you, and if you have it and you want it, you have to maintain it. So um, what I will do is uh, refer this to Roland uh, and set a public hearing on this for 12 13. And I guess well. the open space again is specifically asking that we uh, propose something like the village of <coughs> Salter in Bayshore, New York, has recommended. Right. That's what I'm reading. The so, yeah, doors. we will take Bayshore's. Uh, Bayshore's known for his bamboo. Bayshore bamboo? Well, of course, yeah. The resolution. That's the only kind I get. They got koalas everywhere. Okay. Moving. Well, okay, so that's our. That was it. That's our t town board agenda for this evening. Awesome. Well, and then I got another. This. We have a financial under financial authorize the 2018 transfers. budget transfers and modifications per memo um, of October 25th from um, Bob Kehoe, finance director. We'll move that to the consensus as well. And then under personnel. Uh, current vacancies in on our affordable housing, our Parks and Rec Board. Um, Somers Energy Environment Committee is not on here, but I, I believe we do have some <coughs> on, uh, on that committee as well. Um, upcoming vacancies, Library Planning and Zoning Board. Once again, those are usually um, offered to incumbents um, first, but could, could be openings. So, uh, number three under personnel is authorize the promotion of Barbara Sherry to planning board secretary on a part time basis, working 17 hours per week at an hourly rate of $36 per memo, dated October 26th from Sarah Dim, director of planning, effective immediately. She'll so, be able to stay under the state cap as a retired person. Or no, that's right. We said it doesn't apply. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. Okay. Right. Right. Thanks. So I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize a promotion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Our proposed consensus agenda. One through three. If there's any questions. <laughs> Okay, if not, we'll, we'll add to the, the consensus agenda on the items we moved tonight. So when is it we have to do the official salaries? Next week. Next week. Next week we do. For elected officials. For elected yeah. officials. Yeah. Yeah. So next week there will only be four items on the consensus agenda. Yeah. <laughs> so far. So far. Okay. All right, our, so our next meeting is... Yeah, next week, it is. the uh, the eighth it town is. board regular meeting. Uh, at which point we will set elected official salaries. And we've come to this point of announcements. Do have a good one. Yeah, a good one. Man, that's I was supposed to pass this on, but I kept it. What's it? Oh, oh, I may want to make sure you have one. Well, here, I'll give okay. it to you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, pick one out. Go ahead. I'll go first. Nice. Oh, we got the uh, we got two here. So well, you'll hear about this again after our next meeting, but uh, the Veterans Day Parade, which we celebrate every year here in the town of Somers. The 100th anniversary, Sunday, November 11th, 2018. The parade will start at 10.30. That's the short one. It starts right here at Bailey Park and in the townhouse. We walk up to the cemetery um, uh, for an 11 a.m. ceremony. Refreshments to follow in the townhouse. So if you uh, can please uh, come out and uh, 
and support the marchers. Uh, it really is good seeing all the marchers getting out there. Um, it would be appreciated. So again, it is the 100th anniversary, Sunday, November 11th, 10.30 uh, a.m. Thank you. All right, 11, 11, 11. Is that right? Um, this Saturday, November 3rd, the Somers E-Waste Recycling Day, which is a good opportunity for everyone looking in your house. I have a lot of stuff. All electronics, appliances, computer equipment, keyboards, monitors, electrical or other types of cords, data cabling, washers, dryers, TVs, that's a lot to put in the car, <laughs> scrap metal, welcome to. So City Carding is committed to taking care of your e-waste, and that is from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, so only those three hours, this Saturday morning down at the City Carding Transfer Station on Route 100, uh, very near the, the highway department on Route 100. Also, the following Saturday, or two Saturdays later, on Saturday, November 17th, so two weeks from this Saturday at St. Luke's, it's the Holiday Bazaar. Uh, discover an exquisite, specially curated collection of unique holiday gifts on Saturday, November 17th from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock at St. Uh, Luke's and the Holiday Bazaar. Kicking off, I guess, the holiday season. Okay. All right. I'll go. All right, so Town of Somers continues its bulk re uh, refuge drop-off. Uh, for Somers residents only, Saturday, October 20th, 2018, which is passed, right, <coughs> until November 17th uh, this month. Hours are Monday through fr Friday, 7 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m., and Saturday, 7 a.m. Uh, to 12 p.m., so it's only in the morning. Um, you know, household items include mattresses, furniture, carpeting, wood, bicycles, uh, non-commercial construction debris, uh, and some other things. Refrigerators and air conditioners, $35 each, right? Uh, same thing with propane tanks. They're a special price of $10 each. Uh, non, uh, so things that are not acceptable are hazardous or toxic materials um, and commercial construction materials. All right, so the price, it's $25 a car, $30 per minivan or SUV, uh, $45 per pickup truck, small van, and $86 uh, per ton uh, for a truck larger than a pickup. And so the idea is, is there a cap on the, uh, you know, on the price? If you go in there, we went in there, I went in there on the Saturday. It was, you, it was, was it? Was, it was crowded. Yeah, don't go on a weekend. If you can go don't during go on the weekend, weekend. Go during week. try to go during the week. Uh, they weigh you in, and then when you go out, and in my case, I was with the pickup truck. Uh, you know, what I brought was less in weight than the $45. So he charges you the lower. So be, you know, mm -hmm. make sure you ask when right. you get in. Right. Okay. And this time of year, please support Samaritan's Purse. Samaritan's Purse is looking for shoe boxes filled with fun toys, hygiene items, and school supplies. They're going to be shipped to children outside of the United States who are affected by poverty, war, and natural disasters. That's SamaritansPurse.org. And this Tuesday, of course, is election day. So please exert your constitutional right and come out and vote, Somers. Good point. Yes, election day, definitely. Here, here. Okay, I have uh, two announcements. Uh, St. Luke's Church Holiday Bazaar will be held November 17th from 10 a.m. Did you say <laughs> No. Yeah. That's okay. Sat Saturday, November 17th. Yeah. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at St. Luke's. Yeah. Is that true, Rich? My recollection is <coughs> that it's true. <laughs> okay. And uh, we're in the process of the Northeast Westchester Rotary Annual Coat and Sweater Drive. Oh, yes. Um, There's the box. We're approaching uh, it's one more week. Collection locations, Somers Mobile. Mart, uh, Somers Post Office, Lincoln Dale Post Office, Somers Town Hall, Somers Pharmacy, Somers Library, Heritage Shields Activity Center. The collected items are distributed by the Northern Westchester Community Center and other social service agencies. For more information, uh, see the website at www.newrotaryclub.org or, or call ART at 914-276. Two four three 
two. And um, the town's holiday celebration. Put this on your calendar. Sunday, um, the 2nd of December. Uh, runs uh, basically all day. Uh, we'll be, this year we'll be lighting a Christmas tree and lighting a menorah uh, on the same day. So that looks to be a very uh, festive day in the town of Somers. Will Santa be coming? Yeah. Uh, right. Pictures with Santa. And we'll have the yardstick. Oh, the yardstick. The sticks right. in front of the tree. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. You can grow with the tree. That's a good one. <laughs> what time is that at? Yeah. Three o'clock? I don't have the... Uh, usually usually the lighting's three. around yeah. dusk. It does, the, the lighting's usually just after oh, five. Yeah. Oh, that's right. There's a whole thing. Oh, that. There's a lot yeah, of events. gingerbread second. things. Right. And the, yeah, so... Like I said, it's almost but a whole day. I think the caroling out it's, and such as gingerbread three. things. <laughs> <laughs> Gingerbreads and make the it cookies. Make so <laughs> Yes. Gingerbread stuff. Yes. <laughs> cookies and candies. Oh Candy canes. <laughs> All right. Excellent. And you get free pictures with Santa and Mrs. Claus. Right. The Lions Club. Courtesy of the Lions Club. Sponsored yeah. by the Lions Club. Which I will say, um, just on another note, Another great job by the Lions. Uh, now they had to put it to Sunday, but the Trail of Terror was uh, was very good. Not as big a crowd because again it was a Sunday night. Kids had school on Monday, but the rain was so bad on on Saturday. Uh, but they really put a lot of work into it, and it's uh, it was a fun event. For I heard everybody screams at my house. Yeah, across well, the street. <laughs> Sorry. Which and they weren't inside my house. In case you, they weren't inside my house. They were from across at the park. Yes. So they delivered, Terry. Is it a nice job? Yeah, no. Uh, it's always a, a great um, presentation. And uh, it's uh, one of Herb Reisman's uh, legacies. Yeah. You know, as a uh, summer's Yeah, morning. that's right. That and the carnival. Nice article in the paper today, man. Yes. Very much. He's a good man. If I may, just uh, one yes. thing. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, Bob Reedy passed away. Oh, I know. I was and I just wanted to take notes since uh, his wife, uh, Jean, of course, was so involved in the library and many community causes, and uh, as was Bob, always by her side, and he was always at the Veterans uh, Day Parade, and uh, they were also neighbors, and they would have little girls over at or my kids, at least little girls and little boys, too, <laughs> over their house and have cookies and read books and things like that. So they're both wonderful people, and uh, of course they have each now passed. And I just want to take note of that uh, that, mm. that Bob had passed away, and, and uh, God bless the the Reedies. Yes. Yeah. I had the mm -hmm. pleasure of um, hanging out with Bob over the, the summer. Um, my son and daughter-in-law kind of put have a street fair yeah. it's called uh, Gene Reedy Memorial uh, block party oh. and they go over and get Bob at the um, yeah. FDR park uh, FDR veterans home there and he came over saw his old neighbors and uh, you know he had a he had a great time so oh, good that's yeah. great yeah <clears throat> Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. To executive, uh, to session. Executive, executive session. Yes. Second. To discuss uh, <coughs> contracts. Uh, contracts. contracts. To return or no? Not, no. To, not to return. Who's second to that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. <coughs> you got to say it. Oh, good night, Somers. <laughs>